Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. Today I want to talk about the non-fiction books that I really want to read. I love non-fiction as you know and I did um, non-fiction November last year and I would like to obviously do that again this year. It's a little way away yet though. Um, but I did want to talk about some of the books or the non-fiction books that I am most excited to read. Um, I have a, a few that I own and um, a few that I don't. But yeah, let's get into the video and talk about the books that I would like to read fairly soon. So the first one is The Innocent Man by John Grisham. Now, I love John Grisham's novels, I've really enjoyed reading his books in the past and I know that I have loads more to read and I'm excited about that but he came out with this non-fiction book um, and it's actually now also a um, adaptation or not adaptation a documentary series on Netflix and John Grisham is actually heavily involved and is also um, in that documentary. Um, this follows a man this man uh, who was a sportsman named Ron Williamson and he um, got tangled up in a murder charge that saw him found guilty and convicted of the rape and murder of a local cocktail waitress and he was sent to death row um, and I believe he's an innocent man and I think this is about that. I don't honestly know if he's now been found guilty or not guilty or what's happened there. I would imagine they found him innocent, like he's now been found innocent or uh, because I guess that's why they've now written this book. I obviously don't know 100%. Um, I started watching the Netflix documentary and decided to stop because I didn't want to watch it before I read the book. I think the book could be really interesting. It is quite a big book, it's about 500 pages, but I am really looking forward to this. And I found it in the charity shop for £1.50, which I think is great. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this one and I'm excited to get to it. So yeah, very much looking forward to this. The next book is one that I don't actually own, but I would love to read. Um, and uh, I will show you on my phone, I don't know if you'll be able to see it properly. Um, it is The Devil in the White City, Murder, Magic and Madness at the Fair that Changed America by Eric Larson. Um, read. So this basically, I believe, I don't know too much about it other than it's about um, two men who I think somehow made some kind of like torture fair um, and they were, I don't know if they killed women or they were um, torturing women and things like that and I, I don't know anything else about it. I feel like it could be quite a gory read, that's the only thing that ever really puts me off but to be honest with you, I've, I mean I feel like I've read so much gore and stuff now that I'm probably used to it which I don't think is actually probably a good thing but anyway um, I would really like to read that one I think it's really interesting and sounds like something it's always interesting I think to hear about people's like where what people would do like where what they do to each other like I'd, I'm genuinely baffled all the time and yeah I'm fascinated by this one I'd like to know more about it because I don't know anything else about it at the moment. Next up is a book that I actually brought brand new and I never buy books brand new, like pretty much ever, <laughs> um, but it is Unnatural Causes, The Life and Many Deaths of Britain's Top Forensic Pathologist by Dr Richard Shepherd. Now you may have seen, um, you may or you may not know that I really enjoy a TV show called Autopsy and I think um, it's on Netflix as well but it's about, um, it's basically them talking about famous people who have died and like the timeline before their death because basically Richard Shepherd or Dr Richard Shepherd, Dr. Richard Shepherd um, actually reads their autopsy reports and he explains to you like how it happened and what happened. I love that series and this is his book. Um, this basically um, talks about Dr Richard Shepherd who has performed over 23,000 autopsies and so he's dealt with you know uh, accidents, serial killers, murders, natural disasters, all types of things and he really talks about that, about things that have haunted him and all that kind of thing and I'm really really interested in this like I said I love reading the Case Carpetta series which although it is a um, you know that's that's fiction. Um, I am really interested in the kind of pathology side and like forensic pathology. I find that really fascinating. As you all know, I love Rosalian Isles, where one of the main characters is a forensic pathologist. So yeah, all together, to get all together, I am really excited for this book. I really really want to read this, and it is definitely one on my kind of like I want to say immediate, but we all know that's not the truth. But yeah. I want to read this. <laughs> the next one I'm really interested in is another one that I don't own but it is The Omnivore's Dilemma, A Natural History of Four Meals by Michael Pollan. Pollan? 
this is all about the eating habits of America so it really talks about the difference between you know or the juxtaposition of organic food with fast food and takeaway and it really goes into that in quite some depth I would really like to read this book I think that food and eating is definitely something that I'm trying to think about more I've started Slimming World at the end of April and it's going really well so far but I'm definitely trying to read up more about different eating um you know kind of like scientifically eating things so yeah I think this one could be a really good book and I'm really really looking forward to hopefully getting it at some point. The next one is actually a book that I am currently reading but I have been currently reading for quite some time now and that is Accused um, by Amber Hunt and Amanda Rossman. This is a book about a girl named Beth who was found murdered and um years ago and she um, and her boyfriend at the time was accused uh, but he was then found not guilty and it then talks about um, what happened they're trying to now still try and figure out what happened and you know if there was a cover-up of some kind because the police don't seem that interested in the um, in reopening the case and and it is basically a transcript of a podcast that was done and I think that the style of it is really interesting I really enjoy reading about it and I was actually sent this one by the publisher and NetGalley for review so yeah I really want to hopefully finish that this month so that I can talk to you all about it a bit more but yeah very much looking forward to completing that because I think I'm about 12% through at the minute. The next one is Stiff The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach as we all know I love to read about death and murder and bodies and things like that and this similarly to the Dr Richard Shepherd and Natural Causes. This one is about what happens to our bodies when we die and about dissection, decomposition, body farms, human corpses, crash test dummies, composting, all sorts. There's lots of different things that it talks about and I'm actually really looking forward to reading this one. I think it could be really really fascinating and yeah it just sounds really up my street so looking forward to this one. And we have a book that my friend from work gave me. She loves reading non-fiction books and kind of like different ones and so she passes them on to me when she's finished. The one I'm talking about is My Life in His Paws, The Story of Ted and How He Saved Me by Wendy Hilling. This is about an assistance dog named Ted who helps Wendy Schilling um, basically because she suffers from epidermolysis bullosa recessive dystrophic where her skin tears and blisters at the slightest knock and yeah I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I've heard from Ali that it's really really lovely and really kind of like nice and sweet and obviously it's amazing I think the whole assistance dog thing is absolutely incredible how they can train a dog to like look after a human so much which I think is great um, and obviously my dog could do with some little tricks about how to behave himself sometimes so yeah he's just sat out in the hallway at the minute but anyway really looking forward to reading this one and I think that it could be a really fun one as well and really sweet <laughs> the dog is in front of me so I'm really sorry about that so basically the next one is Night by Eli Weissel I think it's pronounced I believe this is a book about a guy who was um, in the second world war in a concentration camp and it's about that I don't know too much else about it if I'm honest with you I know it's a really short book I tried to get it from my library at one point but they didn't have it anymore um so yeah I do really want to read this one and I think <laughs> stop looking at me no Oh, do you see what I mean about him having to behave himself? Yeah, I think it could be a really fun one and I would really much like to read that one. The next one is one I've heard lots about from Charlie and from Nicole. Um, both of them have talked about this and I know this was a big sort of one in the mental health -a-thon that ran in May. This is, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini and I do believe that Ned Vizzini actually killed himself so I think that this is going to be a really difficult to read. Um, this follows a New York City teenager named Craig Gilner who, I'm going to read the back because I don't know too much about it. It says, ambitious New York City teenager Craig Gilner is determined to succeed at life which means getting into the right high school to get into the right college to get the right job. Once Craig aces his way into Manhattan's executive pre-professional high school the pressure becomes unbearable. He stops eating and sleeping until one night he nearly kills himself. Craig's suicidal episode gets him checked into a mental hospital where his new neighbours include a transsexual sex addict, a girl who has scarred her own face with scissors and the self-elected president Armelio. There, Craig is finally able to confront the sources of his anxiety. Ned Vizzini, who himself spent time in a psych psychiatric hospital, has created a remarkably moving tale about the sometimes unexpected road to happiness. So I know that this is not technically a non-fiction story, but I know that it's based upon the author's life, I believe. I mean, I'm not sure how much of it is like autobiographical. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure the copy that I have has no mention of the fact that he did kill himself. So. I feel like this could be it's just gonna be a really sad book I can feel it and yeah I'm 
I'm kind of nervous to read it but I will um yeah it's also it's a lovely cover I really like this cover of this book and yeah I am looking forward to reading it um it's also a really cool like floppy paperback which is always one of my favorites so yeah I am looking forward to reading this but I'm also kind of nervous too and then the final one that I want to talk about is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Brent um and I honestly know nothing about this the book the back doesn't even tell you what the story is about there isn't like a blurb as such so I couldn't even tell you what the storyline or what the what the non-fiction is about um I believe it's got something to do with some kind of murder and that kind of thing but honestly I couldn't tell you after that it just says on the back the best non-fiction novel since in cold blood and a lot more entertaining John Barrent's enthralling new book is an exotic cocktail, two hearty measures of travel book whimsy mixed with a slug of real life murder, a dollop of old world affluence and a sprinkling of off-centre sex. It's not hard to see why this has sent coachloads of tourists heading for the swampy Georgia coast. So like I said, I have no idea what this is about, but I had, I think I saw this on someone's channel and found it in my, and when I found it in the charity shop, I was like, okay. And this is, um, and uh, the back, on the back it, it sort of categorises it as crime slash travel so it could be really interesting again not sure what it is sounds really interesting though um, my interest has been piqued and I'm very much looking forward to reading it so there you have it guys that is all of the non-fiction books that I want to read it's not all of them it is a 10 of the non-fiction books that I would like to read um, very soon, some that I own, some that I don't. Let me know what non-fiction books you would like to read and if you've read any of these or if you want to read any of these. I would be up for buddy reading non-fiction books as well so if there's any of these that you're interested in and you'd like to buddy read do let me know in the comments down below because I always love buddy reading and I do like to plan ahead so even if you don't want to do it this month let me know. I'm very good at scheduling buddy reads ahead of time. So I just want to also mention my, my video shout out for this video and today I would like to shout out um, Hannah Tay who is one of my favourite booktubers. I've watched her for a really long time. She does do some other videos that aren't sort of bookish but she does vlogs. She talks about charity shop hauls which is one of my favourite things to watch of hers. She got me into the Looking for JJ book and I really loved that book so I definitely would like to shout her out. Let everybody know that she is one of my favourites because I love her and yeah let her know or go and send her some love because I think that she deserves it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it guys and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I shall see you next time for a new video. Bye guys!